Can we have the next question, please? Is there any gent, any brother who is a non-Muslim would like to ask a question? Any non-Muslim? Any non-Muslim there? Muslim. Any non-Muslim here behind? Okay, anyone who is a revert? Okay, sister, you can ask the question. Any revert? Dr. Zekir Naik. Well, before this, I'm so sorry because I'm wearing a mask because I don't want people recognize me because I just converted to Islam and uh, not all people know about that I'm now a Muslim. And actually, this is a great opportunity for me because I learned Islam from the YouTube, I saw the video of Dr. Zakir Naik and now I can deliver my question directly of my girl. It is a good opportunity for me and well, Dr. Zakir Naik, I have a problem here that my parents do not know that now I'm a Muslim and I can wear hijab in my home and I can do so lot in my home because my parents still do not know that I'm a Muslim and then uh, because my parents do not know that now I'm a Muslim I have to go to the church and uh, I have to join Perjamuan Kudus in the church so may I join the church and may I join the what is that Perjamuan Kudus in Bahasa so uh, if I can what is that um, I can I can speak clearly absolutely uh, yeah that is my first question and I have uh, next questions uh, before this I was a Christian and I okay I think I will deliver these questions by Bahasa Indonesia because I think it is so complicated <laughs> and dulu saya ketika di gereja sampai saat ini saya masih menemukan gereja yang memakai bahasa roh dan ketika saya masih menjadi Kristen dulu saya juga sempat berbahasa roh dan itu ada di Alkitab yaitu di kisah para rasul 2 ayat 4 kisah para rasul 10 ayat 46 dan kisah para rasul 19 ayat 6 di ayat itu mengatakan bahwa ada bahasa roh dan itu adalah karunia dari Allah bagaimana pendapat Dr. Zakir Naik mengenai bahasa roh atau dalam bahasa Inggris mungkin dapat disebut dengan tongue language. Thank you. Agak susah ini cemarannya. I think the translator lost. I was a Christian in Bible. Finish. Brother, can you translate? Uh, it's, it's really complicated, brother. Complicated. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing questions every day. <laughs> she, she used to uh, join a church activity um, and uh, in, in the church activity, people use uh, what is so called the language of spirit. Language, language of spirit. Language of spirit. Yeah, yeah. Pro probably there is a theological term, speci specific theological term, but, but I just translate from Indonesian to English. Um, sort of a language of spirit. Probably you, you, you know the term. Now, so what is before? the question? What is the question? Uh, what do you think about the language of spirit used in the church, used by uh, Christian people? Uh, excuse me, Dr. Zakir. It is mentioned in the Bible about the language yeah. of the spirit. I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 18 to 19, correct? Oh, not, not in the gospel. Kis in the Bible. Kisah. Bible is part of gospel. Oh. I'll answer that. 
Yeah. I'm aware of that. I will answer yeah, okay. that. Okay, thank you. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Though I don't understand Indonesian. <laughs> Sister, there's two questions, one in English, one in Indonesian. The first question is that, that she was a Christian. She saw my lecture on the YouTube and she got convinced and she accepted Islam, Alhamdulillah. But she has not told her family members, has not told her parents. Therefore, at home she does not wear the hijab. It's difficult for her to pray at home. And she goes to church. So what's the solution? Sister, <clears throat> if at home you don't wear hijab, normally if you don't wear hijab at home, there is no problem. Because at home you don't have to wear hijab. Because your mother is there, your father is there. Regarding Salah, my advice to you would be, if you feel it's not the right time to tell to your parents, you offer Salah alone in a closed room. You know, you may be having a personal room, that's the best. Or you may make some excuse to go out and pray, but see to it that you pray five times. As far as going to the church is concerned, going to the church per se is not haram, but if you go and you pray there, and you worship, though I know you don't want to worship, my my <laughs> request to you would be that you avoid going to church avoid going to church by making some excuse etc going to church per se is not haram i go to church many times but i go to debate <laughs> but naturally you can't go there to debate so see to it that even if you're forced to go sometimes you don't worship you pray to allah and not to jesus peace be upon him Regarding your second question, that when you are a Christian, they used to speak foreign languages and, and they spoke foreign tongues. And there is a verse in, in the Bible, mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 to 17, that all those who are a believer, the poison shall not harm them and they will speak foreign tongues. The Bible says, there's a verse in the Bible, that the criteria to recognize a believer, the conditions to recognize a believer, that's a Christian believer, is that the poison will not harm them and they will be able to speak foreign tongues. Now this is a test given in the Bible. So when I meet a missionary, I tell him that, you know, you are a believer, I'm not a, yes, I'm a believer. So I say, I will give you a bottle of cyanide. Will you have it? So far, no Christian missionary that I know of has ever had a bottle of cyanide. Because if you are a believer, the Bible says, the poison will not harm you. So I tell him, okay, why don't you have a bottle of cyanide? He said, no, no, no. It is the Satan who wants to test me. I said, okay, if you are a believer, you have to pass the test. And while I was having a debate with Dr. William Campbell, I did not give him poison. Otherwise, he lay an accusation that, you know, I'm trying to murder him. I took out the Indian rupee note, 100 rupee note. And India, I had the debate in, in the year 2000. In the year 2000, there were 22 languages because there are 22 states. So on the Indian note, I read to him 100 rupees in English and X or rupee in Hindi. I said, read the other 20 languages. If you are a believer, if you are a Christian and can speak 20 languages, read what is mentioned here. He could not. So if the Bible is true, the Bible says that a true Christian believer, a person who believes in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the poison will not harm him and he'll speak foreign tongues. So surely we don't agree that this is the word of God. This test mentioned in the Bible, no Christian missionary worth the name has ever passed this test in front of me. Oh, I know of a story of that Christian, forget that, in front of me, I am a doctor, I know what is poison. So this is, therefore, this part of the Bible, we don't consider to be the word of God, it's an interpolation. Hope that answers the question, sister. Please. Yes, sister, one more question. How about if I join... If you join? Speak in English better, sister. Speak in English is good. Uh, Your English is good. It is better than our yeah. translator. <laughs> you speak very good English. Your first question was so clear. Sacrament. Sacrament. Yeah? Sacrament. 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 Sacrament
gentlemen, so I drink, what is that, beer and Sorry? bread. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I drink a beer and bread because it is one of the sacrament of the church. So may I join this sacrament? Ah, in the church what they do, they give the bread and the alcohol, saying, you know, this is from Jesus, peace be upon him. Can you join that? No, sister. That is against the principles of the Quran. So what should I do? Because my parents do not know if I'm a Muslim now. So, so should you, I tell my parents about you, you my... Can at least tell your, I don't agree with this. See, you tell them, tell your parents that you are a believer. They say yes. Okay, then will you speak foreign tongues? You take out, if you want, I'll give you my Indian 100 rupee note. You can give your note to your mother, mother and ask her, can you read this? I'm sure she won't be able to read it. So tell her, I don't agree with this. You don't have to tell you're a Muslim, but you can tell, I don't agree with this verse of the Bible. Ask them the question. Correct? So Quote I to them Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 and tell them, this says you can speak foreign tongues. Mother, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Peace be upon him. Why don't you speak foreign tongues? Don't give poison to your mother, huh? Don't give poison to your mother. Uh, if she has, then you'll blame me. <laughs> Only ask her to read the foreign tongues. And inshallah, slowly, slowly, if you hear my video cassette similarities between Islam and Christianity, you can give this tape. You know, say that my friend gave this tape of a joker looking person from India wearing a cap and a beard, you know, wearing a suit. Give it to him. Give this videotape to your mother, give it to her and tell her that, you know, is it correct? And you sit with her and question her. So inshallah, slowly by slowly, with Ikma. But she is your mother, you have to respect her, you have to love her. To your mother, father and discuss, inshallah Allah will guide them. And I pray to Allah that may he make you instrumental in guiding your parents and your family members to Islam, inshallah. May I have one question? More. One more question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> last um, inshallah. There are many people waiting. The last question. Okay. Yes, sister. If Allah have already forgive a man's sins, so in the in the next will the man get the punishment? Because before Allah has forgave the sin of the man, so. Will the man get the punishment of the sin that has forgiven by Allah? Thank you. Sister has the question that if a person does a sin, ask for forgiveness, Allah forgives the sin, so will he get punishment? Once the sins are forgiven, they will never get punishment. But if the sins are not forgiven, maybe part punishment you may get, part in this world, part in the year after, complete in this world, complete in the year after, or may, may lower your But once the sins are forgiven, for example, before you accepted Islam, all what you did are 100% forgiven, 100%, irrespective of how big the sin was. If you do shirk, Allah forgives it. After you become a Muslim, then your new account starts. Old account, all negative is washed away, the positive is there. But if you do a sin, anytime, you ask forgiveness to Allah, even if the sin is as high as the mountain, inshallah Allah will forgive. Hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. You're most welcome.